mystery in our history. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to the Mystery in Our History podcast, where we take an in-depth look at all things urban legend, conspiracy theory related, and how they came to be. I'm J.R. Supa, and that's Chris Barry. Let's get started. All right, well, I have no clever intro into this episode other than to say that if you like the Beatles, uh, there is a conspiracy theory out there that one of them has actually been dead since the 1960s. Now, before we get started, I want to preface this episode um, by saying nothing in this episode has been proven. And although a lot of what we're about to cover might sound as though we are stating a fact, uh, this is all just theory and conjecture. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, also, this is not everything. If I was going to do everything and we were going to have a podcast and talk about it, this would take uh, at least like two to three hours worth of oh, yeah. stuff. And I didn't want, and it's also a topic that's hard to kind of divide into two episodes. So we wanted to just, uh, make one good episode with the main facts. Totally. Um, now if you'd like to know more the sources we used were Wikipedia, um, a, lo- a Rolling Stone article that we put the link in the description and the mockumentary Paul McCartney really is dead the last the last will and testament of George Harrison and even though this is a mockumentary um, the amount of research they've done and the amount of detail they go into during this uh, movie is very thorough it's crazy too because like this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to beetle conspiracies um, there are a lot of them out there but this is one of the better ones I think um I'm pretty familiar with this conspiracy, but you usually have um, fresh ideas and like uh, just bullet points that I never even see before. So yep. like this is why I'm very excited. This is why I love doing this show. And uh, yeah, I'm just I'm ready to dive in to see what you got. All right. So before we dive in, this is I just want to put it out there. This is my all time favorite conspiracy theory. Nice. Hell yeah. I am not saying that I believe it a hundred percent. I think this particular theory has a lot of clues that are kind of like, wow, really? Um, yeah. But Very fun. as far as conspiracy theories go, I love it. It's my favorite one. Hands yeah, down. Totally. All right. So let's jump in. Uh, Paul is dead is an urban legend and conspiracy theory alleging that Paul McCartney of the Beatles died on November 9th, 1966, and was secretly replaced by a lookalike. Sounds absolutely insane. I know. (laughs) But according to the theory, McCartney was decapitated in a car crash after an argument with the rest of the band members, primarily John Lennon. While driving, he picked up a hitchhiker, uh, supposedly named Rita, And when she realized who he was, she started to go crazy in the car and caused the crash. To spare the public from grief, the surviving Beatles, along with the British government, MI5, replaced him with the winner of a McCartney lookalike contest, sometimes identified as William Campbell or Billy Shears. If Billy Shears sounds familiar, we'll get into that. This was done because the British government believed the news of Paul's death would cause hundreds of fans, primarily women, of the Beatles to commit suicide out of grief. I mean, Beatlemania was a thing. It was a thing. (laughs) William Campbell then underwent plastic surgery in order to match Paul's appearance even more accurately. The government agent that handled the Beatles is believed to have been Maxwell, Like, you can just start putting the pieces together now. Right, Um, exactly. Afterward, the members of the band were racked by guilt at their duplicity and therefore left messages in their music and album artwork to communicate the truth to the fans. So I was actually shocked that you didn't didn't have this in there, but uh, another big conspiracy was uh, Paul's twin brother, Mike, uh, Mike McCarthy, um stepped in and, and took his place here and there until um one of the shears either uh 
Billy Shears or William Campbell basically were, was done with the plastic surgery. Um, I say that because there's, you know, obviously there's, there's photos of, of Paul and Mike together. It's no secret that he has a twin brother or, or it kind of is a little bit. Um, because, uh, I believe he changed his name to Mike McGear after, uh, after some time. Okay. Um, but it's funny because any any Beatles fan from the '50s will tell you, yeah, it's no secret. Paul had a twin brother, Mike, and then once they hit kind of hit the big times, that was kind of uh, swept away in the shadows, if you will. Right. Um, but the it, it's funny because the theory kind of doesn't really hold water because Paul was at Mike's wedding as his best man, <laughs> so you know it's just another theory on the replacement that he stepped yeah. in during the transitional period just to keep kind of keep up the appearance of Paul is there. Um, I actually have not heard of that, and I didn't see it when I was doing um, the the majority of the research that I did. No it kidding, didn't, it didn't really come up. Um, yeah, but I baby think, pictures. But I think it's because. If that was the case, a lot of the clues that we're going to go into um, wouldn't make any sense. Right, right. So I think that's why the majority of the Paul is dead craze clues um, don't include this particular um, theory. Right, yeah, totally. All right. So where did all of this start? because we have to do at least a little history. Yeah, of course. <laughs> 50 years ago, a Detroit DJ started one of the biggest claims and conspiracies in rock and roll history, the Paul is Dead craze. It blew up on October 12, 1969, when Russ Gibb was hosting his show on WKNR. A mysterious caller told him to put on the Beatles' White Album and spin the number 9, number 9 intro from Le Revolution 9 backwards. When Gibb tried it on the air he heard the words turn me on dead man the clues kept coming at the end of strawberry fields forever john says i buried paul so what did it mean the craze took off from there and many clues were quote-unquote uncovered that supposedly proved that paul was dead billy was paul and the rest of the band was trying to tell us oh and uh, ringo still stinks yeah, well, that's not a conspiracy theory. He's just an ass drummer. <laughs> like anyone with any musical talents could tell you Ringo sucks. It's so, I mean, it's, shit. He's, Ringo was just along for the ride. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I think I'm on the same level as Ringo, and I don't even know how to play drums, so that's just saying. Yeah, I mean, all you needed was somebody that, like, could pretend to keep a beat. Yeah, a little bit of drum roll. Yes. So let's look at the story and the clues, and then you guys can make your own conclusions, meaning you can agree with us that Paul is dead. So after the accident, the remaining Beatles were left to decide whether or not they wanted to continue, and it is theorized that they got the inspiration to continue the, uh, the way they did from the book The Open Boat, a story in which four men are lost at sea in a lifeboat. One of them dies, and when they make it back to shore, the other three decide to cover up the death. And the book also inspires them to leave clues to help the fans realize what had happened. Yeah, see, like, right off the bat, I didn't even know that. Yep. So that's, that's new for me, which is great. Yeah. This is already off to a great start. <laughs> so the first clue we see is the formation of Apple Records. It's theorized that they chose Apple Records because it sounds like a Paul Records. A Paul Records, and was a tribute to McCartney. It's a, it's a little weak, but I can see it, I guess. Well, don't forget, like, MI5 is involved in this. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, some of the theories state, like, MI5 was threatening them that if they came clean, you know, if they said anything, they'd, like, just kill them. Um, right. So I think they they wanted to, they probably just wanted to name it, if this is true, they wanted to name it a Paul Records and couldn't, mm -hmm. so they went with Apple. The new Paul, or William, was called Rubber Paul by the original Beatles because of the surgeries he underwent, and this inspired the band to name their first al or their album Rubber Soul. That's uh, that's silly, because I, I, I can't even imagine the album just being called Soul. Yeah, just like Beatles. Well, I, yeah, Soul. I don't even know if they had an actual name for that album yet. Mm. So okay, that makes sense actually. Um, so let's talk Rubber Soul clues. 
Sure. Okay. The band photo is taken from the perspective of Paul looking up from the grave using a distortion lens, which helps um, distort a little bit of the fake Paul. We're going to call him Fall a lot because Mm -hmm. going back and forth between Billy, fake Paul, William, Paul, it it gets very confusing. So Paul, Fall is going to be very easy. Um, Pretty, Pretty clean cut. Yeah, fake Paul. Totally. Um, yeah, so it's the distortion lens is used because he was not done having all of his surgeries and they wanted to make sure that he looked as much like Paul as possible. Um, so using a distortion lens, if he doesn't look like Paul, that's why. You know what I mean? Like they can take. they can use yeah. that as like the the get out of jail free card there. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's uh all right. Yep. So the title of the album is shaped like an upside down heart commonly associated with the loss of a loved one and also looks like a spade and the ace of spades often being referred to as the dead man's card so that one was a little weird to me because i i actually don't see the heart um but i do see the spade for sure like it definitely looks like a spade Mm -hmm. an upside down heart was a little but uh, i guess it's all in the eye of the the beholder person perceiving it Yeah, yeah exactly and of course if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be seeing all these pictures and stuff we're talking about are going to flash across the screen. If you're watching or listening on iTunes, Spotify, Google Music, or wherever else this podcast is being played, I don't even know at this point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, we, yeah, Spotify. We don't do uh, SoundCloud anymore. We've cut ties with them. Um, anyway, we'll put everything up on, on the 4 Guys Media Instagram, at 4 Guys Media. All right. The back of the album, Rubber Soul, has Paul being the only one smoking a cigarette. At the time, in England, cigarettes were sometimes referred to as coffin nails. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, reading between the lines references here. Yes. It's very thinly veiled. A lot. Uh, on the Nowhere Man single, Paul is looking in a different direction than the rest of the band members, symbolizing he is not really a beetle, and his right eye appears swollen from surgery. Paul, the dead Paul, is the Nowhere Man. Okay. Girl was about Jane Asher, real Paul's girlfriend. Fall broke up with her via letter because the band didn't think they could trust her to keep the secret. I, I mean, that makes sense. Um, because I bet if, if she couldn't tell by appearance alone, which I think she would be able to. Probably. She could definitely tell by a personality change. Yeah. So. That makes a lot of sense. And at this time, it's the six, like the middle of the 60s, so it's not, you know, she's dating somebody who's, you know, a member of the Beatles. So at this right. point, you know, to go an extended period of time without actually having, like, a conversation or talking or whatever is not out of the realm of possibility because, like, there's no cell phones. There's no sure. you know, nothing, right? No text, no email. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, I'm looking through you. The song, I'm Looking Through You, is about fall. Uh, Using the lyrics, you don't look different, but you have changed. I'm looking through you. You're not the same. Yeah, that's a very cryptic lyric for sure. And uh, to be honest, I've never looked at uh, this conspiracy from this angle before. Like I said before, um, I've always looked at, like, you know, picture comparisons Mm -hmm. or, like, events that took place. Um, But, yeah, never, like, uh, album art or lyrics. So this is this is gonna be fun these clues yeah, are a lot of fun they're they're awesome yeah. like the clues in the songs Absolutely. the clues in in the the album artwork and everything it's pretty cool Hell yeah. all right so let's ne- let's move on now to the next album the revolver album okay the album title was chosen to symbolize the revolving door that was paul's death and fall's emergence it's theorized that the a drawing was used because fall was still undergoing surgeries and his face was still healing Okay. I mean, that makes sense, but um, when the... Well, no, because you said the the rubber sole one was distorted, so I Mm -hmm. guess I wouldn't really give it away. Okay. All right. Um, Fall is the only one in the drawing facing completely away, showing only one eye, and this is what is believed uh, Paul's decapitated head looked like, only having one eye and all his teeth and hair missing. Oh, that's grim. So that's why they had him looking away and only had showing one eye. Hmm. Um, there's an open palm by Paul's head. Uh, this is meant to symbolize the priest in the Christian religion during a funeral procession 
the priest will hold out the open palm over the coffin of the deceased. Uh, within the album, there's a picture of uh, Fall or Paul, it's Paul, screaming that represents the accident. Um, okay. Or it might be Paul, Fall. I don't even remember at this point. Too many Fall. Too many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in Fall's ear on the cover, there is a little man signaling to listen, and this is meant for the audience. He's coming out of the ear doing one of these guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, in the songs... In the album, experimental sounds are actually used. Uh, it's believed they're used p- to compensate for Fall's singing and bass playing, as he was right-handed and had to learn how to play the bass lefty. Interesting. Now that's a new one mm-hmm. for me, because um, I always wondered, you know, if, if Paul was truly replaced, how different was his voice? How different was his playing style? But I guess if you had something else there to distract your listeners. I mean, you're, you're not going to pay that close attention, I guess. Yeah, so. yeah it makes sense. Um, yeah. Now, in the song Taxman, it's theorized that it was supposed to be like taxidermist instead of taxman, mm. um, which is a little too on the nose because Paul died and then had to go to the taxidermist, yeah. right? So take that one with a grain of salt. But in the song Taxman, they do shout Paul after every phrase. That's weird because that's one of my personal favorites from the Beatles, yeah. and I've actually never noticed that. And I don't know why I didn't go back and listen to it after I read that because every other one that I that is in here, mm-hmm. I went and listened to it. So and you, it, we'll get to those I mean, when we yeah, get to those. But and it's true. you can hear like, it. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. There. It's there. Um, in Taxman, it is there, huh? Yeah, I'm, we're gonna have to listen to it when, when we're uploading yeah. later. But <laughs> um, okay, so actually, one of my personal favorites, Eleanor Rigby, mm, is about. Song. Paul's funeral Um, the lyrics look at all the lonely people Uh, supposedly only the band members uh, the three surviving band members and Paul's parents were in attendance Okay. so the line Father McKenzie writing the words to a sermon that no one will hear is because only the people who attended the real Paul's funeral already knew everything about his life so there was no point in describing the type of life he led at God, the, dude, the that's, funeral. That's so sad from this perspective. That's so grim that, and sad. That's just so messed up, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Yesterday and Today. Okay. That's the next album. The title, it's believed, is meant to symbolize the transition from the old band to the new band. Okay. With Fall um, ever improving both in appearance and performance. Sure. On the cover, fall is in a trunk meant to symbolize a coffin. And it's said you can see a a scar on his lip from the surgeries. Now, there's... Supposedly there was like another album cover and um, I didn't grab it and I didn't really include it because, I mean, it's a little bit aggressive. But it's it's an album cover of all of them wearing dressed like a butcher. Um, okay. They're sitting in chairs and they have like meat draped across them with decapitated dolls, and the, the decapitated dolls are on Fall's shoulders, and then one of the Beatles is holding up just the doll head behind him, and it's like very gruesome. And like when you look at Weird. that, it's like oh my god, like that's pretty easy to tell what they're trying to say there, um, and that's. I guess like why it was scrapped and this one was used. Weird. Yeah. Hey, real quick, um, going back a little bit, sure. you said that um, it said you could see a scar on his lip from the surgeries, and I noticed this is a, a reoccurring theme in this um, outline. Now, the 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 scar on his lip is that something that Paul did not have? Like, yeah. Supposedly, so the, and then, it's just like and then there's Paul just a had scar. like a like a butchered butchered surgery or something that gave him yeah and it it wasn't even botched it was just like it it hadn't fully healed to the point where it's unnoticeable um but they still have like timelines and stuff that they needed to keep as a band and and everything so and that would make sense with the mustaches and yeah later on yes anyway i'm I'm jumping yeah we're we're jumping ahead a little bit but yes we'll get to that yeah um so the song titles in yesterday and today are meant to be the clues drive my car He was driving a car when he was killed. Mm-hmm. I'm only sleeping. Um, 
when a dead body, when you look at a dead body, it looks like they're sleeping. Uh, Dr. Sure. Robert is a reference to the plastic surgeon. Yesterday describes John's sorrow because he was primarily the person that Paul argued with when he left. Uh, right. Act naturally because obviously they're continuing on as the Beatles. Um, and We Can Work It Out is a reference to the band's decision not to give up. Okay. Now, in yesterday, uh, the pronoun he was changed to she so it wouldn't raise too many suspicions. But look at the lyrics. I said something wrong. Now I long for yesterday, which refers to the fight that Paul had that caused Paul to leave uh, in 66 that night, mm. November 9th. That's... Yeah, Jesus, dude. That's that's heavy. Mm-hmm. And, like, the the track listing really does make you go, hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, and I'm sure it just gets better. Yeah, I mean, and it's like you can apply this stuff. Like, all you got to do is find the right lyrics, and it can be applied to anything. Sure, sure. But at the same time, like, it fits. <laughs> right, exactly. It really does. So, all right, let's move on to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. God, this is like another one of my favorite albums. But and and I, I promise I'm gonna stop chiming in on like Beatles albums because they're all pretty great, honestly. But yeah, they are. I, that's, anybody that's who a, says that's the Beatles a, weren't a good band, regardless of whether or not Paul McCartney died in '66 or is still dude, living right now, is foolish. They're full of shit. It's foolish. Like, listen, if so uh, if somebody if somebody says they're they're a little overrated, I will maybe agree with that. But they're still a good band. They're still a good Just band. hit after hit after hit. Like, mm-hmm. all their songs are good songs. They're catchy. Yeah. And, uh, like, don't forget, they were a pop group. Yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Like, they weren't, it, like, <laughs> t- you have to take oh, that. Especially starting account. off. Right. Like, they just especially played kitschy off. pop album. Like, there's interviews of them going, we're not good musicians. We're, we're yeah. a pop band. Like, we're, we're, we're mediocre at best, guys. Yeah. We just play yeah, fun absolutely. songs. Oh, they're so good. But yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm a big fan. I of digress. That, honestly, um, yeah. okay. So the title is of sadness for Paul's death, and this particular album is riddled with clues. Yeah. All right. So the cover is supposed to be a funeral scene. There's fresh sure. dug yeah. earth. Uh, the bass drum is meant to be the gravestone. Okay. Everyone on the cover who is not a beetle was either dead had a near-death experience or portrayed death in some way, including Edgar Allan Poe, Marilyn Monroe, and Bob Dylan. Marilyn Monroe, I believe, committed suicide, and Bob Dylan, I think, had like a really bad motorcycle accident or something that almost killed him um, and was an excuse for him to go to rehab. Yeah, well, it's funny that you mentioned Bob Dylan because he is also another person who has this same exact conspiracy behind them. Really? And I don't know if you know that. I've never heard that before. That's interesting. Um, so the conspiracy is that Bob Dylan died in that motorcycle accident and was replaced with a lookalike, and it would explain how his eyes changed colors. I don't huh. know if you know that. No. Bob Dylan had brown eyes when he was young, and now they are blue. Interesting. Again, it's another thing that makes you go, hmm. Maybe we'll look into that one. Yeah, we could look into that one. That'd be fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Using a mirror on the drum where it says um, Lonely Hearts. Okay. The clue is the number one, the word one, the number one, X, he, die. One, 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 meaning the remaining three Beatles. Uh, X, obviously, is Paul. He, die, is pretty much self-explanatory. That's a very interesting take on that. And I've actually never paid close enough attention. I mean, I the mirror who's going ones around cool. with the mirror to be I, like, dude, oh, like, the mirror ones, the, the mirror <laughs> ones are a little bit of a stretch, but they're also like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> yeah, but like, who, who's looking yeah, like, for that stuff? You know saying. what I mean? So like, they knew what they were doing. Yep. All right. To the left, you can see what is meant to be the Beatles. Um, it looks fake, but it's meant to be the Beatles dressed as though they're at a funeral. Yep, and something I noticed when I was looking at it, too, is all of them, except for Paul, is wearing a white shirt and black tie. Mm-hmm. Paul's just wearing a black shirt. Yep, because he's dead. Because he's dead. The he's yellow flowers dead. are in the shape of a bass guitar with only three strings, again, to show three beetles. It's also in the shape of a P when turned on its side. Yep, that's something I also didn't notice that I noticed today, but... Again, this album cover is like an I Spy page. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. Because here we go. Here's some more. Yeah. 
Oh. The hearts in the bass drum, as in hearts club, mm-hmm. right, um, starts the saying, here lies Paul, and you'll see it on the screen. But essentially, with the red letters under the drum from Beatles being the lies using a trophy as the I. So B-A-T-L-E-S with a little – and you'll see there's a um, a trophy, like a rugby trophy in between the L and the E. So L-I-E-S. And then the yellow flowers that are also the bass and the P are spaced in such a way that very discreetly spell Paul. Interesting. Yes. The doll on the right has a model car on her lap. Same car Paul was supposedly driving when he died. Okay. The doll above the bee in Beatles has his head split open. Same as mm. Paul's head. There's another open palm above Paul's head. Only this time it's the hand of Stephen Crane, the author of The Open Boat, the book that inspired all of this. Jesus, man. Again, when we started, I didn't think there would be this much behind it, but it, it really does go deep, huh? Dude, we haven't even gotten to the songs yet. Oh, my God. The it's inner sleeve of the album is a pool of blood being absorbed. Jesus. Okay. On the back cover, Fall is turned the opposite way from the rest of the band, symbolizing he is not really a Beatle. The words, without you, are next to Fall's head. On purpose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> George yeah. is pointing to the words five o'clock, which was the time of death for Paul. Inside the badge on Paul's sleeve has the letters O P P, but the way that you can read it, it actually looks like O P D, or officially pronounced dead. The title track has the words Billy Shears because I told you we were going to get to that, which is a play mm-hmm. on words, meaning Billy's here, introducing the audience to William Campbell, a.k.a. Fake Paul. Okay. I mean, it's pretty hard to refute any of that because I, ke- I, I, I kept going back to check if, if you were blowing smoke or if it's actually real, <laughs> it's, and it's all it's real, all dude. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah. All right. When the audio is played in reverse... On the title track, it says, It was a fake mustache, referring to the mustache Fall used to cover up the surgery scars. Uh, I believe it was in a interview on TV. Oh, weird. Yeah. Uh, Getting Better, the song refers to Fall's imitation of Paul. Okay. Played backwards, it says, Paul's dead, he lost his hair, his head. Other lyrical clues include, When I caught a glimpse of Rita... I took her home. I nearly made it. The news was rather sad. He blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. They'd seen his face before. Dang, dude. That's seriously interesting stuff. And again, just like, I just never thought of it this way before. And I always just chalked it up to just like the drug use, which I think everybody yeah. chalked it up to. But then if you want to look at it from that angle, why was there drug use? Right. Racked with guilt. Because they're all depressed. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, so let's jump now to the Magical Mystery Tour. And yes, okay. another great album. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on the cover, here's where a lot of people are have a misconception, okay? Mm-hmm. On the cover, Paul, or Fall, is the hippo with the hole in his chest. Symbolism pretty self-explanatory. Hole in the chest, mm-hmm. dead. John is actually the walrus because... Paul was really the walrus, or that's what they say, that he looked like when he died because his face was so messed up, I guess it looked like a walrus. I heard that one before, yeah. Now, the Beatles, upside down, look like the number 5371438, a number that was allegedly secured by John Lennon and forwarded to a funeral home. Now, what is the meaning behind that number? Nothing. Like, it was just okay. It th- like that. It, it the Beatles spelt out that number. It's designed to look like that number spelled out, right? Gotcha. When it's upside okay. down and backwards, so it looks like that number. So John then took that number, secured it with the phone company, and then just forwarded the number to a funeral home, supposedly. I see. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. I wasn't thinking phone number. I was yep. just 
Okay, that makes more sense. Um, okay, so inside, in the drawing, false face is covered and his eyes are closed, symbolizing death. Uh, yeah. The inside photo is believed to be a mistake, showing a picture where Fall is not looking anything like Paul. That's that's interesting. It's almost like it's an obvious goof that they had to cover it up or something. Yeah. Yeah. On the back cover, the people dress in white actually spell out R.I.P. when turned on its side. So, uh, that <laughs> that one I thought, I was just, immediately, I read that one, I was just like, he's full of shit. There's no way it says R.I.P. And then I pulled it up and, and, and did one of these and I went, it says it. Son there it is. Bitch. Like, you can see it. Yeah. Dude, so many of these I was just like, full of shit. And then I went and checked it out and not. It's, it's just crazy. It's not full of shit. It's no, it's not. All right. On the cover, I am... Uh, on, on the cover of the single, I Am the Walrus, mm -hmm. the words, I Am the Walrus, are placed directly over Paul's head. Eggman refers to Humpty Dumpty, who fell and cracked his head. Yep. Played backwards, I Am the Walrus, uh, it says, haha, Paul is dead, to believe to be sarcastic gloating by the band that the ruse was actually working. Yeah, and, and they probably thought they would never make it work or get this far with the replacement ball. Yeah, exactly. So I can see that where they got like that. Um, in the song Strawberry Fields, it is actually believed that that song is about the fans uh, mm -hmm. using the lyrics, living is easy with eyes closed, because you have no idea what's going on, so living is very right. easy. Um, and at the end of the song, John actually says, I buried Paul. Yeah, again, when I saw, uh, you know, again, I saw this and was just like, no way. And then I pulled up the song on YouTube and listened for it. And I, I didn't hear it for the first couple of times, um, but it, it's definitely in there. there. And if anybody wants to go check it out, pull it up. It's I put down the marker. It's 355 in the song. Mm -hmm. So if you if you want to go hear it, go hear it. Because yeah. it's he says, it's I buried there. Paul. I he buried screams Paul. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. the crazy part, is it's not yeah. like this subtle little thing. He screams it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I buried Paul. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's drowned out by the music, but he does. He mm -hmm. screams it. Hello, Goodbye is Fall singing to Paul's ghost. Okay. Blue Jay Way, played backwards, says, please somebody get me out. Yeah. And all these ones, too, playing backwards. I, like, I really want to get The backwards masking. Vinyl. Yeah, I want to get them on vinyl so I can actually, like, Play them backwards and hear these cryptic messages that were left behind. Yeah. All right. Were they, real quick, where, before we move on, sure. were those in the mockumentary that you yep. put up? All these backwards things? All the backwards okay. masking that gets played in the mockumentary, yeah. I'm going to have to listen to it. I know you wanted me to listen to it before we list, uh, like watch this. It's actually, uh, it's really well done. Yeah. For for what it is, like, like I said, the amount of um, information they've gathered, the amount of research they did, was the research is really crazy. in depth, um, which made my life a hell of a lot easier. Nice. Um, but the movie in it, in and of itself is pretty good too. Nice. Just yeah, take no, into I, account. I, just take into account. It's not actually George Harrison speaking. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Because it's a mockumentary. Right. Um, right. All right. So, moving on to the White Album, my White favorite album. album. Is it? Oh yeah. Nice. So my favorite Beatles song is actually I Will, and it's on the White Album. It's nice. it's one of the lesser-known songs, but it's yeah, I love I'm it. trying to think of it. I don't think I know it's it. Only like a I minute. mean, I probably heard it. It's only like a minute and 40 seconds long. Um, okay, so when you hold a mirror to the band name on the cover, it reveals He, B, Ice, and the number three. He, B, Ice, referring to Paul being dead, and the number three for the three remaining Beatles. Yeah, odd poll, but again, at this point, I believe it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the photo evidence is there. Yeah. Um, uh, on the collage poster inside the album, William Campbell's passport photo is believed to be at the bottom. The photo used to uh, the photo that was actually used to win the lookalike contest. Hmm. There's a photo of Paul dancing with two skeleton hands reaching for him in that collage. Oh. <laughs> as well as a photo of Paul in a driver's cap and scarf. Weird. Yep. There was also individual photos of the band included with the album, and on Falls, you it said you can see a scar on his lip. There's so many coincidences. It's just blowing my mind. 
It really is. Yeah. Um, in the song Glass Onion, the lyrics read, Here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. And that's yep. where the common misconception is back on the Magical Mystery Tour. They believe that Paul is in the walrus costume. Right. But it's actually John because Paul was the walrus, blah, 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 blah. Right, right. That makes sense. In While My Guitar Gently Weeps, which is, like, one of the best songs, uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. George calls out for Paul at the end of the song. And you can hear it. It just keeps saying, Paul, yeah. Paul, Paul. Yeah, so again, this is another one where I was just like, oh, really? Because, like, I'm familiar with this song. Yeah. Pretty, Like, I love this song. It's a good so song. I pulled it's it up. one of the best guitar songs, period. It, it, and it really does sound like he's crying out Paul's name at the end mm -hmm. of it. And it really, I mean, it's already a sad song to begin with, but it changes the tone of the song. It makes it even heavier than completely, it already was. Completely and, changes that, the, what the song means to you. Yeah, and, and again, it, it could be argued that he's just he's just calling out, and it's it's not he's not saying a word. I guess like he's just kind of going ah, oh, like you know what I mean. Yeah. But like it it's, does sound sounds like he's like going, ball. Ball. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, when played backwards, the song "I'm So Tired" says Paul is dead, man. Miss him, miss him, miss him. In "Why Don't We Do It in the Road," when played backwards, it says Paul really dead. I really want out. In the song Don't Pass Me By, there are lyrics, you were in a car crash and lost your hair. God, dude. Yeah, this is, these really do line up. And the deeper you get, the sadder it, it, it gets. It's, yeah. It's heavy. It's, yeah, it's pretty nutty, huh? Yeah. Again, if it's true. If it's true, because, again, this is all alleged. But, Very I true. Mean, it's just so many coincidences that it almost is like, what? what I know. <laughs> all right, so... Moving on now to Yellow Submarine. Mm -hmm. uh, on the cover, this is a quick one, but on the cover, yeah. the four band members stand on top of a mountain. And it's John this time holding an open palm over Fall's head. The rest yeah. of the band is pointing down um, to the old band that is now underground or died with Paul. When the song All Together Now is played backwards, it says, I buried Paul. And the lyrics in Only a Northern Song contain, You may think it's not quite right. The band is a little dark and out of key. You're correct. There's nobody there. Yeah. That's so weird, too, because the band that they're pointing to under, underground looks nothing like them. Um, but it's still very interesting, nonetheless. Like, yeah. they all have, like, beards and, and, like, long hair and stuff. But, like, maybe it's... Like the, like to me, it's like maybe that that's what they're doing to like try to mask the truth. They're like, I don't know. It's, well, again, look at it this way, and I don't know mm -hmm. if this is anybody's actually come up with this. This is just my take on that particular one. When you die, it's said that your fingernails grow, your hair grows. So, okay, you know what I mean. And it's yeah. I, it's actually I don't think that it keeps growing. It's as you shrivel up, it just appears to get longer. But yeah, regardless. Right. Um, okay, so let's go on to Abbey Road. Love Abbey Road. Because it's fantastic, just like the rest mm -hmm. of their stuff. Um, right. The cover is once again meant to portray a funeral, sh uh, funeral scene. Mm -hmm. John in all white represents Jesus. Ringo in all black is the pallbearer. George, dressed in all denim or a Canadian tuxedo, is the mm -hmm. grave digger. And Paul barefoot in an old suit is the corpse yep and this one is the known argument for the paul is dead theory it's the main um, in one fact, yeah, yeah it, it pretty much anyone who is familiar with this conspiracy usually points to this album cover um and the main argument is that most people are buried without their shoes because an open casket is from the waist up mm -hmm. uh if you also look paul is out of step with the rest of the band and is once again holding a cigarette or a coffin nail Yep, this is the second time now. Yeah, now there is. Was a... he th real quick? Was yeah. he the only Beatle that smoked? No, they all smoked. They all smoked. That's, that's, that's what I thought. the point. Yeah, that's, that's the point. The, yeah, okay. Uh, there's a VW Beetle parked on the left side of the road with the license plate that reads LMW twenty eight if twenty eight being the age Paul would have been if 
he didn't die. What's the LMW? Do you know? Nothing. Just on the top. I Nothing. Know. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it can't all it can't all be something. Yeah. There's also a line that can be connected starting at that same beetle, um, going up to the right. Uh, to all the car wheels, and it runs right through Paul's head, again, symbolizing the decapitation. Mm -hmm. On the back cover of the album, when you turn it slightly to the left, the Grim Reaper can be seen. And when played backwards, Oh Darling says, In He Lives Me. Again, a reference to Fall. Mm -hmm. Um, The song Come Together is about a corpse, one and one and one is three, the living Beatles. That's a that's another interesting take that I've never really made the connection on. <laughs> and after Abbey Road, we have now arrived back at October 12th, 1969, when Russ Gibb started the Paul is Dead craze. Okay. They found the clues, and the Beatles were scared, not only of being found out, but of MI5 coming to kill them for putting the clues in the albums. Their answer, deny everything, wait six months put out one final album and break up the band yeah and that's that's another crazy thing that i never made a connection of either um and 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 that's why they of course deny everything Mm -hmm. and then break up six months later yeah i never thought of them breaking up so close to when this conspiracy happening i never connected the two basically so this one was like holy shit right and that's the speculation is is that instead of breaking up the band right away which would easily just admit that they did this be very guilty looking yes they said let's make another album and in that album we'll deny everything up into the album and again we'll get into how the album's supposed to be like just let it be um because that's the title of the album yeah but then it was like now we will put out an album and then we'll just break up the band yeah all right, so let's move on to Let It Be. Sure. Fall looked older than the rest of the band from all the surgeries, so the band members grew out their hair and grew facial hair to compensate, make them all look older. Sure. On the cover, Fall is the only one with a red background, red representing blood. The others all had a white background, and once again, he is looking in a different direction than the rest of the band. Yeah, that's just a, like another one of those weird things that you just never think about it until it's always set. looking in a different direction. Yeah, so weird. On the back cover, it was depicted as a sad atmosphere to symbolize an obituary for the Beatles. Mm-hmm. In the title song, Let It Be, the lyrics are meant to tell people to stop asking questions. Some of the lyrics. And when the brokenhearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer. Let it be. When played backwards, it says, he's dead. When the song Get Back is played backwards, it says, help me. Yeah. Again, maybe a call for help since that uh, M15 was, Mm -hmm. you know, after them and they couldn't keep the the Paul never died ruse up. Um, Yeah. And there you have it. Some of the many clues that point to Paul dying. But... The conspiracy doesn't stop there. Good, because I was sad that it was kind of coming to. I like I knew like that was the last Beatles album, and I was just like, oh man, come on. Well, so, nice. So those are the clues from the Beatles albums, but here's where it gets weird and kind of fun. Okay, okay. cool. It's also speculated that John divorced John Lennon divorced his wife to protect her and their child when Paul, when the Paul is dead craze started out of fear of MI5 mm-hmm. and then okay. get out of the country cuz he immediately like took up residence he went in New to, York City yeah he went to New York yeah right. Paul or Fall in this case Fall is speculated to have married Linda McCartney because she had photographs that proved he was an imposter she blackmailed him into marriage to make and to make her into a rock star, and hence the band Wings. That's an interesting take. I because never, she never was a photographer way. that followed the band for a long time. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. It's believed that John married Yoko to throw off MI5 and make them believe he was a Looney Tune, because, which actually makes sense 
because otherwise, mm-hmm. why the hell would you want to be around that talentless <clears throat> hack of a woman? <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a lot of truth there, man. I don't understand what anyone sees in her, honestly. She's the worst. She's terrible. She's the worst just, thing to happen to art. Any just absolute art. toilet Any paper. Art. Yep, agreed. <laughs> Now, it's believed that MI5 tried to get the United States to deport John Lennon so that he would be an easier target for them. Okay. Another um, conspiracy, if you will. Paul is seen playing the guitar right-handed on the cover of England's Disco Magazine because William Campbell was originally a righty, and the belief is that once the band kind of broke up, he started just getting cocky and... Yeah, maybe it was slipping up here and there. Exactly. Um, Paul, or Fall, also did not attend the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony, and it's believed that the other band members told him not to come because he was an imposter. Yeah, almost like a, like you didn't get us here sort of thing, probably. Yeah. Which is honestly kind of a shitty thing to do. Well, but. I mean, so they essentially, the belief is that, that John Lennon had a backlog of like 50 songs that he and Paul McCartney wrote together at mm-hmm. the time of... Paul's death oh so they okay. used so like fall really didn't do anything he other didn't than stand anything, in really. right gotcha that makes sense all right you remember rita the woman uh, who yeah. caused all of this in the first place yep yeah well she called fall and blackmailed him into leaving his wife and marrying her fall called mi5 after the phone call and rita now known as heather mills Soon after, hit by a motorcycle and lost her leg. Huh. Yes, and you know the rest of that story. Yeah. Essentially, after the accident, Rita survived. MI5 gave her a new identity. That's that's the theory, the conspiracy theory in all of this. MI5 gave her a new identity after the Beatles broke up and she saw that Linda McCartney was getting all this fame and fortune from marrying Fall. She was like, I know who you are. I know what happened. I was there. And you're going to divorce her and marry me. And Fall was like, dude, screw you. That's yeah, not I happening. Mean, so he calls honestly, MI5 and MI5 tries to kill her, but they tried to kill her with a motorcycle. And, yeah, stupid. Right. And ended up she only lost her leg. Well, listen, man, like, uh, again, even if this is, uh, like, a, it is a conspiracy and she was going to try to, like, blow the lid on it, trying to blackmail someone first instead of just doing it is a shitty thing to do. Yes. I, and I don't 100%. have a lot of sympathy, so. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Although, it's Paul McCartney, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got, he's got the big bucks. <laughs> exactly. He's got the big bucks. Or Paul McCartney, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Um, George Harrison appears to refer to Paul as Fall in some interviews yeah Um, so it's either a slip up or a slip of the truth right and if you watch paul mccartney really is dead the mockumentary you'll actually Mm -hmm. see the interview um and like it's there he says fall (laughs) wow yeah Uh, the piece de resistance Mm -hmm. on this little conspiracy train sure mi5 had John Lennon killed to prevent him from outing the whole thing. Okay. After John called Fall and told him he was going to go public, Fall called MI5. And in interviews after the shooting that happened in, I believe, 1980, um, Fall doesn't seem sad or surprised. He's just like, ah, oh, it sucks. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? Damn. That's crazy. It's crazy because the whole Mark Chapman uh, was told to kill him from Fiddler on the Roof didn't really add up, honestly. Yeah, I think um, he also said, but, like, the devil told him to do it or something like that. Yeah, right, because of the whole, like, bigger than Jesus references and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, when, when dealing with mental illnesses, a lot of things don't add up. Yep. But, um, you know, he was – was he mentally ill or was he maybe just a patsy for the MI5? I think he was both. So, that makes sense too. I know a lot I of the time. I think he was he was a messed up individual that they got a hold of, and and you know just played off the schizophrenia and got him to kill John. Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, not to veer off of subject here, but there's a lot of proof of that happening in our own country mm-hmm. where FBI well, and, and CIA. We will touch. Contact it. mentally ill, but anyway, that's another episode. We'll touch episode. on that. Don't you worry. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> nice, good. And lastly, along those lines. George Harrison was tacked in his home by someone 
from or at the behest of MI5, trying to silence the only other Beatle that might say something because we all know Ringo is just along for the ride. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, he's along for the ride because he he, 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 he he doesn't have shit without the Beatles, no. let's be honest. It's not like Ringo's going to go drum for someone else. He can't drum. Oh, dude. It's Ringo, <laughs> it's Ringo and his all-star band, and he's the least uh, famous person in the band, and he was a Beatle. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Says a lot about Ringo. I know. Well, there it is, right? Everything you yep. need to know that Paul is dead. Fake Paul is an imposter. The only Beatle that could be dead without anyone caring, is the only one still alive. Ringo Starr. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's least favorite. Exactly. Go figure. Uh, now, real quick, um, have you ever seen when, um, I, I believe somebody confronted Paul McCartney, uh, out, I, I, it was like a red carpet event or something, and uh, they're like, um, you know, Paul McCartney's really dead. And uh, his response to it basically was just like, oh, well, then someone should have told me. And, like, honestly, even if he is a fake Paul McCartney, that's, like, a really funny and cheeky response. I, like, love that. That's that's actually um, pretty fantastic. Yeah. He's just if like, that's... oh, he died? Somebody should have told me. I know. <laughs> it's just Damn like, it. oh, you. <laughs> Why didn't anyone say something? <laughs> well, because, I mean, it's true, right? How are you going to tell someone who's walking around with this persona – I mean, you don't have any real proof that he's dead. You know what I mean? Right. Like, no solid, concrete evidence. No. So this you get to tell someone this is who's walking. All around. conjecture. Right. That's like that's like going up to uh, any famous person, and being like, "Hey, you're supposed to be dead." And it's just like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" What? But um, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a pretty insane story, man. It is. You know. And uh, in fact, am I okay announcing what I've done for next episode? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, so uh, going through this episode and reading this outline before we recorded today um, really inspired me to look further into other Beatles conspiracy theories, and I actually hopped in the driver's seat. JR is is, um, the mastermind behind a lot of these podcasts and uh, gets these outlines ready, but I I sat down, I strapped in, and uh, I wrote another follow-up episode to this one about other uh, Beatles conspiracy theories. Because um, I didn't know there were this many of them out there, but yeah, there's I there's mean, multiple, and um, we got a second episode out of this, and it has nothing to yeah. do with Paul being dead. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited to to announce next episode. We will talk more about uh, Beatles conspiracy theories. I'm not going to get into what they are. You're going to have to tune in and find out. But uh, it's some interesting stuff. I think uh, if you enjoyed this, you should definitely check out next episode. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Me too. All right, that's how we're going to wrap up this time on the Mystery in Our History podcast. If you want to read more on anything we discussed in this episode, the links to our sources are in the description. See you next time, everybody. Bye. See you later. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. If you have any suggestions or topics for us to cover, email us at fourguysmedianetwork at gmail.com. If you're on the go, you can subscribe to our shows on iTunes. Be sure to check out our Patreon page, Four Guys Media Network, for access to exclusive content like minisodes and more. We have a lot of goals to hit, so we can keep improving and continue providing more content ad-free. So all of your donations are greatly appreciated. Make sure you subscribe to the Four Guys Media Network YouTube channel for all of our other projects by clicking the link on the right. And lastly, if you want to watch another episode, just click the link on the left. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.